that. Bunch of criminals. <laughs> it is different. Well, no, I think that uh, like doing it this way with one camera angle, it still, you know, it gets the job done. Yeah. But we could just set. We have another tripod. Well, I have another camera too, but uh, I don't know. Like I want it to be the two lane vibe. That yeah. tripod, you could just screw it in. It's up to you. I mean, we usually do. It doesn't matter. It's, it's yeah, your, we're here, dude. It's your fucking we only got an hour and a half until the 200th video drops. I'll so the 200th video drop on Wednesdays. On Wednesdays. We actually have more than 200, but yeah. for for the last, we're almost four years old. March mm -hmm. 7th or 4th, I think, was our first drop. Yeah. yeah. And so we haven't missed a Wednesday since. Yeah, that's Except uh, for last week. Uh, I think you had it, it, it was some kind of piece of content y'all put out recently where you're talking about one of the first pieces of, pieces of advice you got was to be consistent, right? And I mean that that's as consistent as it gets. Not not talking about lives, not talking about other drops for you know special projects with other brands or extra drops like that's hard to do. How did you pull it off before? Because how how long did it take till I you came the along? First video. Oh, you did. So yeah. you were kind of there from the. I wasn't going on trips, but I was editing. Okay, you know, yeah. off our iPhone and GoPro stuff. Yeah, it was just we'd hand nightmare. it over and say, "Here, yeah, we make have, us look cool." Yeah, there was like AirDrop <laughs> folders. There was iCloud. There was some GoPro. It was well. So you got to start somewhere. So as it goes, Lance and I have this idea to start this channel, right? Yeah. And thanks to you, I mean, I think we were only three months old or something. You had been by here once before talking to thrashing but you came in and you we did our first podcast with you then we weren't even off the ground yeah but we think we have this idea to start a channel and we can go video and do the things with an insta with a uh, I move call, uh phones Laptop, and, yeah. the, and the stupid gopros yeah yeah and so you we come back and we're like so what do we do with it now oh shit. we're like holy shit so <laughs> There's a nice guy that we know that uh, was working with uh, one of the apparel shops that we use here for our screen printing for our shirts. And he's like, Adam, he's like, come on in. I'll show you how to edit. Yeah. And we went and spent an hour with him. And both of us, like, we're not young, but we're not old. And we're just like, what Let the hell Let me tell you that? exactly what just popped in my head. <laughs> Have you seen Zoolander? Yes. <laughs> when they were it's, looking at the computer yeah, and they were, it's ah, inside. Ah. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking right now. I mean, we were just, we looked at each other when we walked out of there. And we're like, what the hell is that all and about? He, he probably thought we were going to watch him for an hour and go, all right, we got this. Let's yeah. go. And it was, you know? he was just doing very simple edits through iMovie. Yeah. And, and he, he could tell we were confused. Mm -hmm. So he's like, well, maybe I could edit for you for the first few and get you trained and show you how to do that. And we're like, Okay, how much would it be? And he's like, I don't know. He, he said, how much do you want to pay? Right, something <laughs> like that. So we walked over here in our current shop. It used to be Thrash. And, and we said, does anyone know anyone that can edit? And mm -hmm. Rob Scott, thank God, pulled up his phone and said, this guy do, does this. And it had a drone shot. They were camping at Kern. Drone shot in fire. Just a really cool vibe to it. And we're like, we need to talk to him. Yeah, yeah. And that's when we first met him. Nice. He came over the next day. Walked in with crutches and a broken foot. Took our. You know, phone. I think we've told the story to. I times. don't think I was actually still on crutches. Yeah, you were. Oh, yeah, was you I? Were. Yeah. Oh yeah. Damn, okay. You, I don't know if you were on a, crutches, but you I know had I was the, limping. You had the four wheel thing. Oh, okay, yeah. I was wheeling. Yeah. Wheeling the damn. All right, yeah. something or other. Yeah. But then and the uh, scooter. <laughs> you see, the cool thing is, is he did. He edited the stuff we handed over to him. He really didn't know us other than what he was editing. Yeah. And then he started coming in and editing in the office. And it's like, all right, he's now getting to know who we are, our personalities. And at some point we said, go on a trip with us. And from that day on, it was like, he's been with us every, the yeah, whole yeah. time. But from that day on, it was like, he was on every trip because how could you not have him on a trip when he can catch? Yeah, if, you can, if you're capturing and editing, like you have more... I wouldn't say the word is control, but it, it kind of is control over like making sure that yeah. you can tell the story th that you're trying to tell. It's a lot more intentional. Like I was showing him something the other day of just the raw footage in the control panel on Premiere. Yeah. And how it looks. I'm like, that's the issue with sending people footage is they might use that section that I specifically would never use. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just part of it. But yeah, it's being able to have all three of us have a hand in how it's captured, how it's edited. 
you know, it just works well, out. And we've changed the vibe. Yep. I mean, the reality is when we first started doing it, it was just our GoPros and iPhones, just mm-hmm. Lance and I. I remember you had the lanyards. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we, yeah, yeah that was yeah, a good idea. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yep. and then it became, okay, so he is going on a ride with us, but now we've got, now he's got two or three devices with him. We've got two devices each. So then it was like when you get back to the shop, where do you, what do you do? How do you download all this stuff? So then it's evolved to like every night on trips, we would download the card so he could keep it organized. Yeah. Now we're to a point where it, it him being out with us on the road is like a director in the field. Yeah. Because we're talking on the comms. We don't have any more GoPros. We'll do a handheld a little bit here and there. But it's like come into frame, go out of frame, come through the shot. I'm on the left. I'm going to come by you guys. So now he can, when he gets back to the hotel room, he downloads the cards. When he gets back to the shop, he's like, I remember this. I remember I directed yeah. this. What and makes with, it even better, though, is the you, fact that we're not filming as yeah. much. So it's like we could just. So when you're doing that, though, your recording of, hey, come into frame, is that still in the file that you can then cut out or? I think he's more speaking on like when we're actually capturing stuff, we're not necessarily recording the vocal dialogue of, hey, come into frame. But every riding shot, every rolling shot is directed instead of like before it kind of just be floating around like a goober just filming shit, which was great. That, that's worked. that's an evolution though right, right. because yeah. you know i think the the good thing about looking at these past let's just for context of like staying with an even number these past four years four years and these drops you know watching the, progr- the progression of how you capture how you tell the story and yep. uh, where it's gone from there and yes now watching it when you have obviously if you want to make it more cinematic and movie like you have to it's it's i wouldn't say it's staged because you're di- you're riding the trip right yeah but if you want that badass shot with the drone, you, you, don't, you don't like keep riding and just like hold it out there and just yeah. <laughs> and then and ride. We, like you have to plan those things. Yeah, we recently filmed something that was uh, in one location for the whole day, mm. so we could set up you know all these riding shots. I could get off and hike into the brush with the camera and get some blurry foreground in the bushes and then oh, rip it yeah. by, and spending all the time with that. And that's kind of like the other end of the spectrum compared to, say, just a solo vlogger that's just capturing everything mm-hmm. that isn't planned at all. So we're just we always try to find that balance of in, being in the middle, where what we say and what we do isn't really it's not like planned. You know, we know mm-hmm. what trip we're going on, but it's not. They say this, yeah. But the twist on it is trying to get a little higher quality when we can. You know, how is it for you guys? Like on that end of now becoming more or less the actors of this. And I'm, I mean that in complete respect. I don't mean it like of anything else. Like it's, you're at this point where you're, you know, the goal on this trip is to tell this story, of this trip, and you're, you kind of have got to the point where, other than like, you know, full on production, like videographer, like filmmaker, people, like your content is the creme de la creme of what's out there to do, right? Well, the so, cool thing is, is we are still ourselves. Yeah, just riding how we ride. It's just we don't have to do as much. Yeah. So it's it's just it's a good time. You can focus more on being the 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 host of the show than right. you know. Host, that's a good way like to that. say it. Yeah. yeah. But I, I I mean I think people view us sometimes as actors because they're watching the content on big screen. Okay. Right. So yeah. they feel like it's a television show. Mm-hmm. Plus the way he edits with this more of a cinematic flavor. We've kind of just said that all along. We want this to be more of a production company. Yeah, yeah. Like let it still be raw and authentic, but let the stories start to come out. And so mm-hmm. if you look over the years of what we've done, it's it's us telling stories about small towns, but it's also us inviting small town people to tell their story. Yeah, yeah. And let them kind of interject into the show. And if we just ask a question and then sit back and be quiet and just listen, you're going to get such great stories out of these people that have lived in these small towns for 40 or 50 years. Yeah, the yeah. history of it, the way the town has evolved. And, and it's so that's what, and I think if we stick to that same vibe, um, we still haven't seen every town in America. Yeah. And so there's so many more towns out there that are going to be able to tell the story. Yeah. And then it doesn't get old, right? Because it could be a similar story, but it's a new town and it's a different person. Mm-hmm. That's how I think, for me at least, like we've been doing this for four years, it's not a struggle to go get on the road. 
Yeah. Like, I'm excited to see something that maybe we've seen before but haven't shown on the channel. Like, we're going to go do a trip uh, to Petrified Forest. We haven't been there. Mm. We've driven by it a hundred times. But yeah. we're going to ride there, and we're going to go to the crater and show people, which we haven't showed them that before. Yeah. Um, it, so it's going to be a, a whole different vibe again. Yeah, and people always ask us, doing what you guys do is the fun <coughs> gone. Oh, and it's yeah. like, no, the fun's not gone. For us, it's still every highway, every road we get on is like a new open canvas. So it's like, as we're working and creating and he's filming and we're all saying, oh, look at this shot, look at that shot, it's part of the adventure. So yeah. I can't even imagine riding without that happening. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think that'd be a fun part, too. I mean, if you really think about it, like helmet or no helmet, like you're behind the handlebars, you're kind of like there's a big movie. It's an IMAX theater, right. basically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, that's that was always a push for me to get into, like, photography because you see photography everywhere. You see compositions and angles and yes then when the sun goes down and then your buddy rides up next to you like god damn he looks cool i hope i look that cool we're, we're, i want to you know what i mean yeah. we're living we're living what we're sharing yeah. with the people so if they're at home enjoying the video or the, the whatever series we have out we were enjoying being behind the bars yeah, it's yeah. a good point you know but i i mean it you know we did a review at the end of the year and it's like we did a lot of firsts last year, and mm -hmm. you wouldn't think that as much as we ride, but we took our daughters out as an example. Oh yeah, remember those? Yeah, and it was it was like this insane, you know, ride with them, and they just loved it, and we didn't know how they were going to react to it. And then we did we got out of the country for the first time. We went mm -hmm. to Canada, which was insanely beautiful. But it it's I don't think the content is like old and rewritten every time. Yeah. I mean, we will go to certain places often. Yeah. But there's generally another storyline behind it. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, it's not like, hey, we're going to Williams again. No, we, we're we at Williams and it's 10 feet of snow. Yeah. Or you know, Williams is on the way to this right. other thing, you know. Like, and you can tell so many different stories and so many different things in each town because just as much as going to a new town, being in this other town, you find, like you're saying, New people, new places, a restaurant. Oh, I, I haven't eaten there. Yeah. You know. Or as you get to meet people in these towns, like other storylines get to pop up. Yep. Almost yeah. like now that you know this person, they say, oh, you got to talk to old, old Red down there in the garage. Like that dude's <laughs> got a story. And then if you have the time to go sit down and listen to Red, next thing you know, you're like, holy shit. Like now you're now you're hiking three feet in to see where he buried somebody one time. Yep. <laughs> you know I mean? Or There's three, so three, three miles in. <laughs> so many more stories to tell. We have so much to do and so much. That it's just exciting to know that that's ahead of us. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely something. And that's kind of one of the things I wanted to ask you guys about, like, you know, being at this 200th drop, you know, like, I, I guess the, the question is not, are you bored? Is it, has it become, uh, not the word mundane, um, but... Have you got to the point where, like, you want to throw a wrench in the mix somehow to grow in a different way or find another way to experience this? Like, maybe it's the bikes. Maybe, you know, like, have you ever thought about, well, I wonder what it would be like to do it on a, a, a lesser comfortable bike? You know, those kind I of I have been pushing for the idea of a cross-country Vespa trip for years. <laughs> the guys ain't buying it. Okay, I wouldn't I mean, <laughs> I think there there is something to that. But like you said, like, even if we kept the same recipe for the format for anything else, like because there's always new stuff coming along. I mean, we got people out here that ride to Neptunes every single week of the year. They still like it. Yeah. yeah. Now what we're doing is a little different than that, but as the quality improves over time, the ideas improve over time. We had a guy in here yesterday that was just, you know, giving his input. He was saying, you know, you guys should lean a little more on, the human story on people's story so what if you've been here before you haven't told this person's story and i maybe that's the direction we might head part of the it's just almost. just trying new things in the content but not necessarily trying to throw a wrench in the mix or switch it up but just always we don't have anything we have to like abide to you know it's our content yeah. i know? mean we tried to throw a little wrench in it a year and a half ago when we went on the Pan Americas. Yeah. And that was a back and hit us in the forehead. Yeah. <laughs> Not only did we break some bones, but our the videos didn't do as well. Yeah. And we didn't understand why, because it's just motorcycle guys going out on a different yeah. bike. We have talked about maybe doing a different ride to Sturgis with thrashing and doing some different bikes there. Um, 
but I we're primarily going to stick to our same yeah. you know method. And I think what for me at least, and I know Lance and Josh probably feel the same way, but when we get these stories that come back from people that are inspired, whether they have cancer, they're afflicted with an illness of some sort, and they're watching our stuff from their hospital beds and or their homes, uh, and they're laid up and they're saying, your stuff got me through. Yeah. I mean, that that becomes even more... It, we're still growing as a brand yeah. and we're still growing as a, as a mercantile, if you will. Um, it's paying the bills, but we're not making tons of money. Yeah, yeah. You know, the the money's being made in the gratification we get out of, you know, people that tell us their story. And it's like, you saved my life. And it's it's just insanely inspirational. I've yeah. said insanely like three times, but, and we've, we've got, but it's so inspirational. We get that all the time. And, but to answer your question, I feel personally like we're just getting started. Yeah, yeah. So it's, to me, it's like, Every day, this is a new adventure, even though it's we're pushing into our fourth year. It's like a new adventure. This is great. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel. You know? Yeah. And then I, w I wonder, like, uh, fuck, I had a question. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I guess part of that, to piggyback on what he was saying earlier, like, hey, we started, everyone had a camera. And then, you know, they still bring handhelds. They used to each have a handheld in the helmet. Like, with the change in hardware, like not switching the camera setups up, that inevitably will change the way the content looks a little bit, change yeah. the format. So, I don't know. It doesn't I mean, get old. You so know? you go from that with us having cameras and stuff. Now on every location, we have dressing rooms. <laughs> it's, it's called the, the trailer, the bikes, <laughs> men's room. Right. Yeah. yeah. But nothing yep. like the open road, dinner, lunch, stopping, spending the night, meeting people, going to a bar, hanging out, and hitting the road again. Yeah. That continuous... Yeah, it's an easy recipe, right? You know? But it you kind of get something different every time you cook it. Oh, so, yeah. totally. The uh, it's almost you know just thinking in hindsight here, it's almost like you you can tell you can have three different shows on one place based on the the story side of it or the personal side of it of, of what you're doing. It's, I mean, not to add more pressure on it, but it's like one of those no, things. That's, that's that it, good. It's like you you know there are so many angles in which you can skin that cat, right? And uh, I don't even know if that's the right analogy, but it sounded like skinning a cat at different angles like, would work. I right? like skinning cats. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> you should see his collection. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I think that's what, in my opinion, I think that's what makes our stuff mostly relevant because it's, you know, with with the exception of like the documentaries, and even in the documentaries that we've done, um, we do maybe five or 10 questions that are scripted, yeah. right? To ask the person to let them draw out. But most cases, we just kind of let them open up. It's an open-ended question and they just start talking yeah. about their town. And so if if we were, and then when we get off the bikes, we're not scripting. I mean, we have, we're lucky because we can look at Wikipedia and kind of memorize it quickly. Yeah. To give a little bit of the history. I remember back in the early days when you would literally, because I, you did this while we were riding together in the Texas one a long time ago, you would start researching shit or look at your infotainment center and get all these different tidbits of like, like almost like if you're, if you're writing a story, then you have to describe it. And even though you have the video, you were still describing other elements that are not present in the, mm. in the video, if you will. Yeah. But yeah. other than that, we're definitely not scripted. We just get off the bikes and. Oh, we Sometimes know. Josh might say, hey, yeah, here we are. What do you got going? Boom, we go. Have y'all got the cue down for that yet? Because sometimes y'all don't do it. They go different time. directions and, like, <laughs> yeah, we just, never figure. I'm like, go left. That way I know which way to throw uh, it. And we just, <laughs> just winging it. But that's the fun part about it. Yeah. I mean, he pulled up some stuff yesterday that, I mean, I think what we're going to do this year is maybe a mid-year bloopers. Mm. And then an end of your bloopers because it's there's some funny stuff. I mean, and it's yeah. like a half hour full bloopers. <laughs> yeah, and in, I mean, there's hundreds of them in the prior four years, but to go back and find them yeah. in terabytes and terabytes of footage on a hard drive but now you're isn't going to happen. Yeah. yeah, now I'm trying to collect. Yeah, we, them. we don't take a ton of cuts. I mean, it is what it is, and we'll say yeah. the wrong town name or how they pronounce it, or and we get in trouble for that. But but yeah. it was I think the funniest one was when we were down in in the Keys this year, last year. Yeah, and people kept walking in front of us <laughs> as we're filming. We're just, 
we just look like idiots. And then I'm saying something like, uh, we're filming here. Can't you, you know, just, but there's, there's going to be some really funny we spoofs actually, on it. We actually had a guy send us t-shirts with yeah, sets, the logo sets of the town and said, we're filming here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he put a two lane logo on the shirt, sets her. And then on the back, it was the, the, the buoy. thimble. The buoy. Of, yeah. 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 That, yeah. that we talked about that. Cause I think I came through and hung out with you guys at one point and y'all had just got back and I was you know, Florida's a tough one for me, right? It's yeah. a tough one that has like a couple of gyms, but there's like, it's it's a treacherous treacherous like journey to go experience those gyms. Yeah. yeah. The key, I love the key, the last one, mm-hmm. you know. But goddamn, they need to make a boat from the west side of the island <laughs> or a, a, a bridge from there to skip all the other shit. It's right. like, it was well, we did it in one day. Uh, you went there and back. back. No, I stayed there and had a freaking blast. Yeah, yeah. I w- if we did it again, we need to stay there a couple yeah. days. It's a it's a party, man. It's yeah, maybe party. it'll change our opinion on it then. Because right now, when we <laughs> it's not there, good. We the other thing, I, I don't know. Yeah. This might sound a little lame, but like I will say that you know, I don't. Let me ask you this question because me and my buddies that I travel with, the Fast Life crew, when we travel, we we can have this day, this four or five hundred mile day of just like headwinds and. <laughs> You know, just everything that makes the ride just a little uncomfortable. It's right. kind of like it's not like a full on toothache, but it's like you feel it there and you're yep. paying attention to it, so it's annoying you, right? And then this whole day just shit, and then you're at the last thirty miles into the town, and the sun starts to set, and something happens where everybody's energy is turned on. You got this badass. Everybody's got a camera out. Everybody's getting selfies <laughs> and taking pictures of each other, and. Then you get to the town and you're like, let's fucking go. It's ha- it you know, happened. It's like, times. Yep. yeah. Our biggest one that we had that we did, how many 16 hours of rain? Oh, Laidlaw Tombstone. Tombstone. Yeah, oh, with, shit. With Laidlaw. Rain, pouring rain. And the last day, the last evening before we split off, we're, we're going through Oatman. Skies opened up. The sunset was a miracle. Everyone was just like, whoa, yeah. that was great. I always wonder sometimes, like, how many times people actually stop and look at that. Because, you know, when you're here, like, you go drive down the coast, you'll see people pull over and pull a lawn chair out mm-hmm. and watch the sunset. Right. And then, you know, it's been a joke because I found a meme once where it was like, sunset when you're at a uh, landmark or specific place and it's bland as hell. It's sunset when you're in the grocery store parking lot. <laughs> yeah. <it's> like, <laughs> one of those things. Right. But yep. It's like how much, you know, you guys have seen the country in, in, you know, more than I have by this point now. And it's like you still get to these places where you're kind of like, man, I just want to go stand there for a minute. You know, yeah. riding through it is badass, but just like whether it's a canyon. I actually did Moki Dunway, Dunway, however you say Dunway. it, on this Dunway, trip. Yeah. Did Because you? you mentioned it to me four years ago. And I, I had to take my wife through Monument Valley because I wanted her to see this place. And it's not the same in a car. Let me just tell you no. that much. It's not the same. <laughs> but I was like, you know, we have time. Let's go climb this and go it's beautiful it, it was, it's such another there's there's such a part of utah in the middle that's really hard to get to because it's not in the way to anything but it's worth every oh yeah every side quest yeah we we haven't been able to get there the last couple times so we still yeah. bones no, we drove past it two years ago and then last year we it was rain we couldn't get up but but it's a it's a beautiful beautiful ride and we just happened upon it yeah we were headed down to monument valley from moab and it was like there's a sign that says go here and it's like 25 miles less or something yeah. 30 and i'm like the nav's telling me to go I this think it was way. 50 miles something like yeah, that it's, and then we get off and i didn't see the sign that said no pavement yeah you know it's only We're a small like, part yeah. yeah but it's just going down the. but it was yeah. great it was beautiful yeah it's yeah. not as bad i still haven't made it up pike's peak yet you ever do that yet i bitched out like yeah. three quarters of the way we well, yeah, I, mean, I haven't really. You that. haven't. No. Is that the Colorado going over? Yeah, that was yeah. that was the yeah. second year, first year of Sturgis, maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's like another country up there. Yeah, it's, it's wild. It's scary. Yeah. <laughs> is it is it paved though? It's paved all the way up to like the last like uh, maybe five percent of it. But huh. man, it was a windy day, and if you know anything about that Colorado wind, <laughs> and then yeah. I'm on a big ass bagger loaded down with all my stuff, and there's like a very narrow road, and as you're riding. All you see is sky. Like, you see no trees, no right. nothing. It's just, like, pavement, sky. And that's where I realized I had anxiety. <laughs> and I was just getting – because I'm going so slow. The wind's blowing so hard because there's a traffic line. And it's like I'm scared I'm going to fall off. It's just there's too many things happening at mm-hmm. once, and it just kind of overloaded me. And I was like, 
I'm good right I'm, here. I'm gonna turn around. Good. I'm gonna sit right here. Y'all go up there and get your donut or whatever the hell's up Have there. Have you done Rocky Mountain National? Yeah, that was easy. Yeah, but you know, that but, feels like you're on top of the world. Yeah, too. it's it's actually I haven't done it on the bike. I did it in the car, oh. but it it is beautiful. Um, uh, Big Bear Pass, another one, but it's like some of those passes, like you know, Big Bear Pass, you're fourteen thousand feet up, but it's also the land around you is also still high elevation, mm-hmm. as opposed to Pikes Peak, is like. 14,000 feet, but then out there into the plains, it's lower than like, you know, so you feel much, mm-hmm. much higher, you know, but. Huh. I didn't know it was 14 because Mount Whitney is the what? highest place in the is continent. It tw- is it 12,000? Because there's like a, a, Maybe a group. Maybe it's 12. There's a group of mountains out there that's all like the, the 12 or 14,000 feet yeah. crew or well, some shit. Mount Whitney's is like 14. 14,129. Yeah. It's the highest place in the country. Pikes Not Peak, 14,115. Yeah. yeah. What's what's Mount Whitney? Mount Whitney. I mean, you've got up in uh, Oregon also, you've got... 14,505. So, so 400 Mount feet. High, yeah. But And that's funny because Mount Whitney has the highest place in the country and Death Valley, which is really close, has the lowest below sea level. Damn. Yeah. I haven't ridden uh, Death Valley yet. That's a oh. goal for this summer. Hit it in the winter. That's a Alabama's. photographer's go in the winter. <laughs> Whoa! That's yeah, like I'm going to do it in the summertime. That's <laughs> so a photographer's gonna... heaven. It me. is. Uh, Although right now you can't get to a lot of the places because it, it flooded, and mm-hmm. they just recently opened it up. We're going to actually go through there in a few weeks. Nice. You want to join us? You'd love it. Man, I got to go to like Zabriskie Point, oh. the painted palette. The, yeah. I mean, it's there's just some really cool places. Well, we, there. we go there in the winter. Yeah. Well, well here's the deal. One day, maybe maybe at some point I'll take, you know, because we've been talking about doing a, a ride together out here yeah. forever. And it's like, I don't know. It's, I was telling you the other day, watching y'all's, uh, you know, your grand opening here. I'm like, man, I should have just flew out there. I didn't even think. I forget sometimes <laughs> that airplanes exist. You know what I mean? And you should have. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking that as I watched the video, which obviously means it was like recorded a week or two before or some shit. And so, yeah, I need to, I need to be more mindful of that. And also, I don't know. It's, it's just hard. Like I guess you, I, I look at every trip as either a road trip or a bike trip. And if it's not one of those, then I kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Right. Well, know? think, think about this. Um, where did we do the podcast last year with you? Uh, was it just in our little studio? Watch yeah, Hatchie. no, no, no. That no, was, was little, 2020. I think we did. Oh, I think we're it? over in our little warehouse. I don't know if we did it last year. I think it was 2022 when we did it last because Jaden was here. We did at Thrashing. We did one with Thrashing. I think two. Here. Yeah. Was ours in just our garage part of the no. warehouse, sitting at the stool table? No, we did one in y'all's other studio. Yeah, that's what I, that was the last one I did with y'all, but that wasn't last year. It was the year before, and the year before that. Is when we did the thrashing one right. in the uh, like, in the center there. Yeah, and now you come in here. This used to be yeah. thrashing. We've got yeah. a beautiful studio. We've got this retail store, which most people wouldn't be opening retail stores in yeah. this day and age. Um, we had we served eight hundred and forty tacos, six hundred cans and bottles of water. Mm. We had to have four hundred people here. It was insane. It's awesome. Yeah, well, it was, it was the, awesome. I think the purpose. I think. I think a retail store is good, and it's kind of like our conversation we've been having since I've been here since this morning. Right? It's there's a lot of things that that aren't the same as they have always been. Like a lot of things that are going away, but I think some of those things need to come back because a lot of the things that we feel like we're missing, and I'm using things as all kinds of uh, anal- or, or like as to describe a lot of different stuff, things, whatever. Uh, I understand what you're saying. You understand, yeah, because yeah, yeah. we're drinking. Gotcha, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, why not try to bring back a a tangible feel? Like, are you going to – is it going to be as – are you doing it for that to make – I mean, obviously you want to make money, but it's like that's not the end goal. Like, oh, this retail store is going to be everything. It's a part of the bigger picture It's here. a destination where people can go because people do like the human touch. Yeah, I do. We We wanted to create a destination point. Mm-hmm. And the San Fernando Valley is ripe and everywhere around us. There's not a motorcycle shop like this, but it was really more of a place where people can come in and just take their, their boots off and sit down and relax. There's water, there's coffee, there's an air pump if you need to put you air in your You can meet your bike. group here and then you go and You can meet ride. your group here. Yeah. Hell, we need a new place that has a loft and another cool, you know, the brick building we're talking we about. We need to get <laughs> stripper poles. And, yeah. yeah. But in the amount... Go ahead. But the the interesting thing is we were getting people coming over to the other warehouse, yeah. and it's like 
we couldn't really show them anything. You couldn't yeah. showcase the brand at all. Yep. And so to do this, I mean, our faces are all over this building. It's like we're egotistical. No, we're but just it's, selling it's, a brand. It's really cool. <laughs> it's got a nice vibe to it. People, I, I told you earlier today, I've seen separate groups of people sitting in our lounge that don't know each other start texting each other, and they're going on rides together. Mm -hmm. It's That's the vibe we wanted is come in and just let your hair down. Yeah, and that's definitely that. I mean, I think it's a good – destination for people that are out of town passing through or locals looking for a you know like somewhere to go and you know connect and then go i mean i came up to panga canyon when i came here today right. yeah you know just driving it which sucked but you know <laughs> still i don't know how people ride there there's i've never been there where it's not traffic solid on one way to or the panga? other yeah oh i pass everyone in there you just rip by everybody i got stuck <laughs> between two chicks riding bicycles <laughs> mm -hmm. next to each other I'm like, dude, line the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, get in the bike just, lane. And I, they were hot, so I didn't say anything. <laughs> but, what yeah. What were you saying? I was just saying, like, kind of like you were saying on earlier, you know, you can see a part in a magazine but still have a thousand questions. When people come in here looking for one thing and one thing only but ask a question about, like, we had a guy this morning come in for perch clamps, and he was asking, show me pictures about his shifter. I'm like, let me just show you. Grab one out of the display, go outside, show them how it works. Oh, shit, I had no idea. You couldn't explain that over the phone. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then they get the parts they want, and we get to meet people. Mm. So you win-win. Win-win. So working, I mean, you guys have worked with Harley for quite quite a while now. I mean, it, it seemed like they picked up with you guys quite like quite early. I remember it's funny because that, that catalog that came out where y'all are sitting there doing like a – Thanksgiving dinner or some shit. <laughs> so my mail goes to my grandmother's house still because I, I, you know, I don't want the government to know where I live. And <laughs> <laughs> so I remember his address is. <laughs> so we were at the house one day and, uh, you know, Harley sends out the, you know, you buy a bike, you get in the hog. And mm -hmm. so you, they send you all the little brochures and stuff and whatnot. And I was like, I opened it up, found the page and I was like, look, mom, I know them. <laughs> <laughs> and my grandma's like, Oh, that's cool. She doesn't give a shit, but right, you know, it's right. just funny to me. But it's like seeing you guys do that, seeing you guys on, was it last year's drop, I believe? or the, uh, the last four years, actually. Yeah, so, so just all that. It's Yeah, I think I think early on it started with Lance and Lance. Yeah, yeah. They did a father-son thing. Um, and we had been talking to them, you know, about maybe some special project or something, and and then they had some turnover, and then all of a sudden Matt Swedlin gets involved, and next thing you know, we're now doing some of these shoots. And um, I mean, we're blessed to have that piece in our life right now. Mm -hmm. We know that that could go away at any time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it has certainly helped, and the feedback we get is like it's nice to see them showcasing people that actually ride. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we get a ton of that. I mean, we we took the CBOs to Sturgis this year mm -hmm. uh, to help showcase tour packs on them because no yeah. one had seen them with tour packs. And so it's great to have that relationship. Mm -hmm. But those bikes, that those reels that we did during that time, there's over 10 million views on them. With, nice. With you looking at all the different channels. So they're getting some love too. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's a mutual benefit. Yeah. We, have a, we have a good working relationship with yeah. them. You know, we got their phone numbers. They got ours. We call. We talk. You know, it doesn't always have to be business. It could just be, hey, what's up? Yeah. You know, so, it's cool. Yeah. No, I think it's rad that they're. You know, like what, what that you said that listener said. It's cool that they are leaning into people that are actually like boots on the ground riders out there mm -hmm. doing stuff and things like that, and not just finding whatever celebrity they can, you know put their name behind right. in some form or fashion. It looks like authenticity is what it becomes, you know? And there are people, they are Harley fans like it, and they tell them that. Yeah, so yeah. So they hear I mean, it. We, we probably put down almost 10,000, maybe 12,000 miles on Harley fleet bikes and Eagle Rider bikes. Yeah. Because we've got that relationship with both of them. And so our bikes don't get the wear and tear on some of it, but we're, we're putting some miles down just on their – yeah, on there, well, I remember but, in 2020 when y'all came to Dallas and we, you know, we did the video podcast at the studio yeah. and whatnot. You, I think you, one of you had already had like you had just got the Rogue Glide, the orange one, I believe. Right, mine had like seventy five thousand on it or something. Yeah, it was like a, yeah. it was already the like red you one, were yeah. you yeah, were ready right. for another one. Yeah, because you had came off a of Street Glide, right? 
Yeah. So yeah. we went to Durango right after Harley. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I blew up a, an engine, so it was like <laughs> I got to get something. Yeah. And I got the the orange guy. Yeah. And we put some big, nice divots in it from that <laughs> twisted, twisted sister. Sister. Yeah. Fuck. yeah, we don't like Jesus. Uh, well, they just one inch rock gravel. It was yeah. like crazy. You know, what was crazy. Like that was really the first time I had ridden that twisted yeah. sisters. Really, uh, with you guys, and uh, you know. After riding more of Southwest Texas now, that shit is garbage. <laughs> I liked getting there. Yeah, getting Those there. Those roads through where we were riding yeah, before yeah. we got to the Through Fredericksburg and yeah. kind of yeah, like the hill country. Hill it country is. was great. But like g- towards like Alpine and Terlingua, Terlingua and, and Marfa and, and Fort, where you guys left and y'all had to jump back on the 10 to kind of make time. Yep. If y'all would have stayed on that, that 90, I think it was, it's, it's badass. Mm. And so... I've last two years I've been riding it. That's where I went on my FXR this year before Durango, and it's. Well, it, I guess it's, we're gonna have to go back out and ride it. It's Big Bend Terralingua area is a. It's hard to it's hard to pitch it to you guys, right? Because of everything within three hundred miles of here, but it there's something weird and like not weird. It's there's something in the air. It's kind of like if, when you're at Monument Valley, you, there you feel something there. Mm-hmm. It's got that vibe. You know, you can ride down to the, you ride on the Rio Grande at some points and it's a ghost town. It's, there's not much there. I mean, I really love Monument Valley, but we've been there three or four times. We've stayed in the San Juan River. San Juan, baby. That's the one. Right on the, and every time we've been there, it's like, all right, at three in the morning, let's go out and see. Stars. And at three in the morning, we're sleeping. Yeah. We can't, it's like, damn it. (laughs) I want to go see the. But why are you sleeping? Because back then I used to drink with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that little deck help, they help have. Help me understand this okay. for one minute. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm I just, I'm so at a loss for words because that's what they drink now. They'll, they'll have, he'll have a glass of wine. It's water so all your. So I'm the only one just getting soused. Oh, man. That's got to feel awkward. <laughs> it, no, it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> but it's like, where are my friends? Yeah, it disappeared. <laughs> well, we're drinking Sturgis. I'll be drinking like a fucking. Fish what makes it in worse? Arizona. What makes really? it worse? Oh yeah, you're gonna be a fish in Arizona. I'll be a fish in Arizona. It's gonna be cold. A little, a little whiskey blanket. You know what I mean? <laughs> What's funny is that they're all like playing the sober game, and there's nothing but alcohol around this shop. I so know, it's right. all yours. It's, it's all mine. mine. Uh, somehow it still goes down. Quite people quick. send it to us. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want it to get rotten. So, yeah, somebody's got to do the work. It's true. I got I to gotta get a higher, higher clientele of listeners because my listeners, they don't send me shit. They just tell me about it. Hey, there's a <laughs> there's a really great bottle over here. You should go find it and buy it yourself. Well, we're you know? blessed. We got, I mean, we got really. Yeah. There's some good Stand. shit back there. I, I, yeah. I already did a retail earlier. Yeah. That's a that's a really nice maker's mark you got there. Yeah. A uh, little blue label. That's uh, teaches on. Every yeah. bottle out there <laughs> that you saw. Yeah. That's all was sent in. Yeah. Mm. Is that the Rockford Makers? I might have Rockford no. Fosgate. Yes. How, how about the Harley yeah. whiskey? That's not good whiskey. <laughs> yeah, that's that Southern Four Comfort. Roses, Eagle Rare. Yeah, that's all. I might have to dig into a little. Angels Envy out. That's I, mean, I do want to try that. You said you had some. I haven't had that. that what yet. Four Roses? Angels. Yeah. Angels yeah. Envy. Yeah. yeah, we have that. But yeah, it's a uh, uh, man. Like you got some. Yeah. What's going on with you? Me? Oh, it's not my podcast. Huh? Sal's podcast. People hear about my shit all the time. I know, but like, what's happening? You're like, this is your annual trip, right? Where you're uh, going and getting content. Yeah, part of it. Yeah, okay. like, this trip is um, usually I do this in March because a lot of the West Coast doesn't go to Daytona, so it's easy to come out here. And when Daytona happens, there becomes like this, like the industry kind of like stays put till it's over, right? Right. So you can come and sit down with brands and shops, and there's really not anything in the way. But starting this year off. I wanted to start it off by, on a road trip like this. My wife's with me on this one. So we've had like a hand, like it's a very good balance of vacation and work. Right. Um, and it's it's a really good way to start the year. Like I'm pretty freaking amped right now. I'm ready to get back. I'm ready to paint. I'm ready to take photos, ride, that, I'm, you know? all that stuff. And I think that using the new year as a catalyst where even though we're all going to be the cool guy and say that we don't make resolutions, we just change whenever, whatever nerd. Um, whatever nerd. The thing is that like 
to me it it becomes a thank you. Now, I look like the alcoholic. <laughs> uh, I think a new year is a chance to um, look back at the year before and assess things and make adjustments. And yes, you can do that at any point in time. In um, drink that down first. Okay, I guess that's a, a drink. Yes. <laughs> Little swig. It's probably backwash, to be honest with you. Um, so for me, it's like a chance to, you know, assess what I did last year, make some changes, and and start the year running with more enthusiasm and energy, and kind of a clear direction. So yep. as you guys know it better than anybody, um, being in a helmet, you know, I find the same solace sometimes driving in, in a car or, or Jeep or whatever you really can work out those layers of complexities mm -hmm. and, and uh, shit going on in your life in your head. And so for me, this road trip gives me a, a clear path to like get things done. I get an idea in Utah, but in Idaho, I'm like, yeah, that was a dumb idea, yeah. you know, and work it out. And then by the time I get home, I feel like I have a more clear path to navigate. So. Agreed. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, it's. You don't you say there. on camera, but this is. This is our board, and we plan. Everything. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like plan to like the nth degree, but it's a it's a framework that allows us to sit in here and go, okay. So we're talking about going to Bodhi. Um, what do we think would be cool about that? And yeah. then the three of us can collaborate on. Hey, this we we've got some people we could call. We could do this. There's a town owner, but it, it just if if you have a little bit of a framework, yeah, it allows for that. You so know, my group to be created in a different way. Yeah, my group that I travel with, we do a similar thing where we would we would, it's on kind of it's it's almost we got three more states as a group to travel together in the forty eight. Um, if you can get the group together, that's the hard part is getting the group back <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Yeah, so the, we were going to finish it last year, but my FXR build kind of got in the way. Well, what we do is the same thing. So right around this time every year, we sit down because we know next year is uh, Pacific Northwest, right? So we sit down and everybody comes to the table with things that they've looked at or saw that they might want to check out. And then we put the put the you know laptop to the TV and we start Google mapping it and figuring out, all right, well, guys, we just did three days in a row of 500 miles. Like we should probably do a, like a, a layover somewhere or maybe we should, you know, do a short day. And we kind of do the same thing. Um, but I think, you know, especially like – listening to that phone call you had kind of like a, you know, eavesdropping into it earlier. I think that's one thing that, that people should do if they want to travel. Like if you got someone that wants to go on a trip, the enthusiasm that comes across the table helps you stay connected to the idea. Right. You know, it's like when you, those memes, they say all of the, the, when the ride gets announced, there's all these people. And then yeah. when a weekend it dwindles right. down to nobody, well, how much, how much real conversation has had place to keep people involved and interested in that, so, uh, amount of time until it's time to go. The idea always sounds good, and then when you get closer, you get those people that. Mm. That's why you got to have yeah. these like things in between to keep mm -hmm. people connected to it. So what we do is, you know, eight of us, we put it all together. We figure out where we're going to go. Some of the hotels, some of them we kind of keep open if we decide to go further or shorter. Right. Book all the campgrounds or whatever that's kind of hard to get into, and then we figure out okay, well, it's going to cost us uh, staying. All our hotels are going to cost us four thousand dollars. All right, everybody put their money, $100 on a table. And then next month, everybody's got another 100 And so it becomes like a dues thing until mm -hmm. we leave on the trip so that everything's paid for, except for gas, booze, food, right. and stuff like that. Um, and if we have anything left over out of the trips, then we'll we'll do a really big-ass bar tab at one of the right. last spots. So Blow it all. <laughs> yeah, we're not coming home with any money. <laughs> but that's a good way to do it. Yeah. And, and a lot of things that we've found out over the years um, – you know, there's a lot of solo riders, yeah. and they wish they had a group that they could ride with. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the common. What is your what is your like spill to them to help them find their their group or their people or whatever? Do you like kind of help them with that kind of idea of finding something? I mean, not really. If I'm being perfectly honest, I mean, we just kind of like the guy I was talking to today mm -hmm. solo. Okay. And he just doesn't know where to ride. He's oh. from Maryland. So I was giving him some different options depending on which city he was going through. He wanted to go into Arizona, so I was mm. telling him the, kind of the areas there. But um, the comments that come in 
you know, or like, I wish I had a buddy to ride with, or I wish I could go with a group and the comments that we make back to them, well, it's good that at least you're riding, right? Yeah. yeah. Like keep that part of it up. We've kind of maybe this year a little bit more, um, when you mentioned, do we say anything? We've been talking about the Harley app, right? Yeah, yeah. Because there's a forum there, there's events that they promote, there's a bunch of things. And because we're doing some of the mile crushing series on that, we've been pushing people more that direction. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I haven't found a, a really good app out there yet that has this whole collaboration and maps and different places to go. There's just, and it's maybe something we should make at some point, you know, yeah. because when you go to try to find motorcycle rides in this country, it's not the easiest thing to find. Right. Depends on what kind of bike you're on. Depends if it's touring, if it's not, if it, but we found it. Well, we, know? we yeah. make it yeah, like, yeah. so I'll go into a map and I'll say, okay, here's the 40 or the 80 or the 15. We don't want to be on it that long. So what's, what's adjacent to it? What, how do we get onto the smaller roads? Yeah. You know, there's just not something out there that says, okay, I want to go from, um, Canoga park, California to Prescott, Arizona. And I want to take small roads. Yeah. You it's like avoid the, highways, but it's not necessarily. You can avoid there. the highway on the app, on the on nav, Google, yeah, but yeah. it's. Yeah, but then they say, you know, it tries to put you back on the highway. Yeah. Or, right. Yeah. Yeah. And well, the, the friends thing, I mean, they're just, everyone's got such a different situation. Do you not have riding friends? Because I won't get into that. But like, it's mostly like, hey, can you find a way to still enjoy it? Are you still getting out there and riding? Are you going to events? You know, it's. Yeah, there's a there's a level of we, we've always said there's a level of being vulnerable that you have to be this guy that's willing to come to a grand opening where other people that are interested in this type of riding is going to mm -hmm. be and try to get out of your comfort zone of going up and speaking to somebody and say, hey, like, where are you guys from? Oh, man, that's no shit. I'm from I'm Pasadena. You're yep. so and so. And next thing you know, but it's it's a lot of people that I've noticed are kind of, we see it at our bike night. I told you I've been running a bike night for seven years now, right? We get guys that maybe listen to the podcast or follow the page or they follow one of the other guys that come up there and they'll come and they'll sit in the corner and never make effort. Right. Yeah. Right. And sometimes we don't know if they're here for us or not. And then actually, you know, they leave and they get on a bike that we saw. They're like, oh shit, I would have said something yeah. to that guy. I, saw, I met a guy in a parking structure yesterday and he said, hey, what kind of bike do you have? You know, I said, oh, it's a Har Harley. And he goes, no, what kind? Road Glide Special. Oh, I have an FLA, blah, blah, blah. He named something off. and Bin number. <laughs> and he's like, and I go, oh, you ride. Well, check out Two Lane Life. And he goes, you know what? I'm going to check that out. I'm always looking for new people to ride with. And I'm like, uh, I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but, that's, but I mean, that's get, part of the, go ahead. Sorry. We just get asked so frequently that, you know, it's like one of those, you say one, say yes to one, you got to say yes to them all. Not really, but, um, you know, we like our tight group. We like safety. We like, yeah. you know. It, once you know people, but Eagle Rider, we've been talking to them about a Wild West tour where we're on it. And they promote the fact that come and ride with two lane life on this tour. Yeah. Five car links. <laughs> yeah. Minimum. Well, we'll be up front. Yeah. You know, because we're not going to, you know. Well, before we started the channel, there yeah. were two times we let a guy jump in with us. Mm -hmm. Same guy, and he went down both times. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he took out one of the other riders <laughs> one time. <laughs> so, and it's it's not like, I think I think we're also kind of in a place where, for us, it's, it's a pretty big liability to have people ride yeah. with us. Because... This country is so litigious, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to sue everything. That's that a big-ass word. Now we Hold have on. a brand. Whoa. Now yeah. we have a, oh, dude, now we have a brand. <laughs> but, I mean, they're so – they want to sue you at every – Oh, yeah. And, and so yeah. they're going to attack you, your insurance company. And it's like we just – we try to stay away from it. Like, and, yeah. it, and we would love to ride with people. We've done it a couple times, but literally try to stay away from it. Just yeah, we yeah. just don't – we don't like Sunday ride, you know. If yeah. we do, it's probably just – I'll go. It's I like solo thing. riding on weekends when I can get out, and when we hit the road, we're just hitting the road. We're working. You know, like it's you said earlier, sibling. you yeah. can't you can't always have the obligation to have to entertain someone on a trip when you, we got work to do. What we do yeah. is cool, but I it's mean, still a lot of work. Even yeah. one of our employees, Paul, wants us to go ride, and we'll do that at some point. But 
we're when we go ride, we figured out early on this weekend thing for two days to get two drops doesn't work because now you got to go next week and do it again. Mm -hmm. But if we can go out five to ten days and get eight to ten drops, now we've got two months worth of content. Yeah. And people are like, well, why didn't you stop in my town? And well, well, that was eight weeks ago. Like yeah, it, yeah. But it, it, at least it gives us time to stay in the shop, yeah. in the store, and gives him time to edit before we have to hit another Dude, trip. I remember on we were in Ter or, uh, Bandera, Texas, and you're wow. sitting there on the laptop just not being yeah. able to party. Well, yes. He doesn't edit on trips anymore. Anymore, anymore. It's yeah, like yeah. We wait till we get back, but... When we ride with the thrashing guys, Lance and Juan, or with fueling, with all of us, there could be 10 of us, but we all know each other. Like when we rode with you and Cody, yeah, yeah. you guys are good riders. Yeah. So it's like there's a vibe yeah, already fit. It. So there's only a certain amount of people we've ridden with. The Shaws. Yep. And did we do any other? We've had a couple. We've had people like jump in here and there. Also, also the, the but they're willing to go to the, dis the with, distance. Uh, yeah. Andy. Andy Van Vien, yeah. yeah. Sometimes the the speed too, because like y'all maintain a, a normal speed like we do when we travel. So it's ninety it's, to one hundred. <laughs> you joking? Yeah, like, not always, but you know yeah. it's up there. Like some people yeah. don't like to go past that eighty mile mark, yep. and it becomes hard for you know um, me. I don't like being passed by eighteen wheelers and cars, no. so I want to ride just above that. If not, depending on how smooth the road is, way past that. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, but that's that's the thing about having knowing people you can ride with or, or meeting up with guys you know. All right, they're good enough. You trust them. You know, so it's that's yeah. important. That's really important to know. And like that Andy Van Veen that we he was with. a C he was a motor officer killer rider. You know, and when we first were riding, it's like oh, I wonder what he's gonna be like. But it's like, damn, this guy is good. He's out you there. Yeah. So you know, while while games away, like how has it been with like the. I guess the promotion of you and Lance, your son, like through all these different channels from whether it's the Harley or the hot bike ads or not saying it's bad in any kind of way, but like, what's it been like to like more or less have that thing out there and be a part of all these interviews and, and uh different. It's cool. I mean, we're basically all two lane life. Yeah. Yeah. We do things together and, and we, people know us as two lane life. If a guy does a little bit of a, I'm a, a solo thing here and there, but it's still, we're two lane life. Yeah. He said it's a good sipper. It is a good sipper. I dig it. Smooth. It don't burn. I got some 120 proof at the shop that a friend of mine left. Or some Knob Creek or something? Uh, something like that. And it's so smooth when you when you hit it, like it doesn't burn at all. Yeah. And, Knob uh, Creek's gnarly. All my problems my come to the juice. surface when I drink it. That's like heavy hitter. Yeah. <laughs> But um, no, I just asked that question because you know, like, What's it's got to be different. I'll ask him the question about like having you know all the, all the articles, all the things with him and his son in it, and you know, it's like your son's got a whole another level of like a whole second life of of almost like equal amount of success and uh, mm -hmm. and exposure through well, all this other stuff, it, and it's kind of happened that way his whole life because he was racing dirt bikes and we yeah. would be traveling all over the world, especially when he got into freestyle. Yeah. So it, it, it's interesting how, I mean, how it all it's, played out. What's, what's interesting to me is I, I'm a banker, and, and I put these two on billboards, and, you know, we've known each other for so long. Yeah. But I don't, and I don't know that we've shared this with Lance, or I don't know if how you feel about this, but I think with Lance, <clears throat> I don't think we'd be where we're at without his help. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when we first started writing... It was an introduction to like the Saddlemans or the Clockwork people, and he had those connections. Yeah, and so they would give us product at, you know, a discount. We had mm. to buy it. Yeah, and then as as we started writing more and the Instagram started growing a little bit, then it was like, okay, we'll give it to you, at, you know, half off. And then the, then it was like, we're just gonna have you run it. Yeah, yeah. And we did that for six or so years seven years and then so then that's when he started also building his brand and so we'd go to the trade shows for drag yeah right yeah. and now we're making faces and meeting people and for three years we're talking to people yeah so when we decided to actually launch this mm -hmm. um, we went to a drag show and, and it's drag specialties it's not a drag show <laughs> yeah. right 
uh, called NVP, yeah. and it's their. They do it twice a year, and they bring all their dealers in, and they showcase new products from their from their vendors. Yeah. And so after getting you know all these acquaintances and over the years, then it was like, hey, we're going to start something here. Are you on board with this? And yeah. every one of the brands that we had ridden with over the last seven years said yes. Yeah, yeah, hundred. So that was whether it was a dollar or whether it was a thousand dollars, it didn't matter to us. Right, but are you there? And they're they're yes. And so now you walk up to our door on our storefront, and all those same brands are on our door. Yeah, because we've run them for a long time. We know we can trust their parts. We know that we're loyal. And it's that, that but see, that I don't think would have happened without him yeah. making some of those introductions for but us. But it's interesting to the point of yeah. that is exactly what he said is one hundred percent true. And I think with us starting our channel. He actually said he's building this business. He's focused on it. And I think he got into a point where he was like, I really like what they're doing. Yeah. I need to do this for my brand. Mm -hmm. And we co-do them together sometimes. But then he built that. We're building this. So it's like it's a good union, but we've learned off each other as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think with our channel, I think a lot of the YouTube guys, and this could be wrong, but it's my feeling I've seen a lot of the people that have been doing it longer than us, almost doing more stuff kind of like us. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's 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 new ideas and new perspectives. Like I, you know, it, it's it's pretentious for any of us to sit here and feel like, oh well, you know, the way I shoot my videos is the way that I created. I mean, right. we're, we're kind of all, you know, as far as guys like uh, you know Jay and myself and other people that that photograph or video things, we all been inspired or influenced by people right but absolutely i think that the i think that you have some people and this is a good topic on the youtube thing and but not a shit talking right it's the youtube mouth talking about how squishy the seat is around four different lights i think that that day is over i think the bar has been raised to a point where if you think that that's all you got to do to kind of play the game then it's it's kind of hard to to start there the same way like social media or anything, as as more higher-end people take the platform bigger, it becomes harder entry points, right? Right. Of course, anybody can start a YouTube mm -hmm. however they want. Like, will but, they last? Yeah, will they last? Will they get the traction they need to stay connected? Yeah. And yeah. part of that, like they were saying, you know, for they met everyone, a couple people through Lance, and then for six, seven years, it wasn't like, I want. it wasn't transactional. I want this, I want this. There's all these whether it's a new person or existing person in this space, they're just going straight for brands, trying to get something out of it, not we, we, building a relationship, right. not trusting in the people and the product, and not, frankly, not putting in the time sometimes. And now maybe I'm not one to talk because I hopped in after that seven years, but it's just something to keep. No, but I, I think it's you've seen it. Yeah. You've seen it happen and, and work, and it's, it's a, maybe a little different way. We don't do any affiliate stuff. That's why we started our own brand and our own store is to sell our own stuff and sell their stuff. Yeah. And it, it really, at it, it, its infancy, when we first started, it was just let's put the parts that we have on our bikes on the store. We yeah. didn't have a, a, a bigger a thousand, yeah. you know, parts and products on the store. And that was kind of just to have a presence on a website. We just wanted it to pay to for go. a ride. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pay for the trip. Can pay you, for itself. Yeah. yeah. And then we've got this little bit of money that the sponsors are giving us we can hire a guy and we'll use that money to help to grow and then get to the point yeah but so it's thing, a constant investment yeah, yeah but the thing and then you have to have things that, that work and line up right i mean josh came into our 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 life our two-lane life and he embraced it and kind of he wasn't just a guy that was hired yeah yeah he's a guy that put his heart and soul into it and was with the heart and soul of the brand. Yeah, yeah. You need that, you know. I mean, you feel that through the videos and yeah. the content. You feel like, you know, you found an old soul in him. That's for damn sure. Exactly. I still trip out how young he is. It's like, God damn it, dude. I wish He's I was 18. <laughs> <laughs> Barely legal. <laughs> Are you drinking? We got him off the tinder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's a good point that, that I've tried to. And jello. Uh, yeah. We all gel. Yeah. You know. That's because he's got that old soul that we were talking yeah. about. You know, he's, he's seen he us him. fight. Yeah. He's in... We fight. Yeah. It's okay. Usually his fault, but <laughs> we don't fight. He just gets mad. Yeah, <laughs> he's a drinker still. Yeah, he's, he's in his feelings. But but 
and we said this early on, if if it gets to a point where like we're just gonna throw knives at each other and kill each other and then it's over, let's not let it get there. Let's just cut everything out. Well, I think a good good way for that to apply to maybe my generation my generation or younger this shit's got me slurring already god damn <laughs> my tongue's sticking to things in my yeah. mouth uh the the ability to have a disagreement or have a, a a difference of opinion but you know get out of that space and work through the problem to stay for the bigger picture of what you got going on so i think so many of us myself included and others we 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 feel slighted or we feel whatever, and we just kind of like, well, that's it. Fuck that guy. I'm out. Change. I'm moving. Fuck no, it. You, 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 know? you can't take anything personal, and you can't assume anything. Yeah. And once you get that through, then you can understand. Some but can we get also mad, can we get do fight, get so personal, and we do assume things. So we're, we're just regular human beings. Yeah. But the difference, and there's, this is not a knock on, on females, but yeah. this is <laughs> a knock on females for sure. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like so. Canceled. <laughs> We may not talk for a couple. Do you talk about this on your podcast? I do. Okay, (laughs) but then we sit down and we hug it out, and it's like it's and it's over. It's not brought up again. It's not something that we rehash. It's like I got you. I understand. You can't hold grudges. It's communication here. It's this there, and we get through that. And it's we've known each other for a long time. My grandma was mad at my aunt for something that happened twenty seven years ago. (laughs) This is my point. It is. I'm just like, trying to. They split. forgot. Yeah. yeah. Like three months later, I don't go to him and say, "Hey, that n- nail color did it really bother you?" And he's like, <laughs> yeah. "Yes, yes, yes." <laughs> we yeah. we just we. It may take a day. It could take a couple days, but it. And I think it's important for people to hear it because we are human, and, but we're in a partnership. We're married. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you have to become one to let people be two. Or. <laughs> Do you think I would be the stepson or the adopted You're, son? Uh, well, I was adopted, so maybe you're adopted. All right. There we have it, Your folks. father and I decided to. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Oh, Sidon. Chuck and Larry over yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking A. Man, it's a, uh, well, you know, one a piece of advice I've gotten recently that's been helpful is uh, is managing my expectations of other people, like what I expect out of them. And that's something I think we all have an expectation of anybody we let into our life, right? Like for whatever for, uh a friend that comes to the shop, a friend that I ride with, a, a, a guy, anything, right? And so managing what I expect from them and has helped me like not feel like anything that they've done or not done has been slighted towards me. Right. And so new practice that I'm dealing with, but I, I see it as a better way of going about things. That way I don't get so in my feelings about things. Because I'm, I'm a fucking emotional dude. Like, I would say emotional, like uh, like crying and shit. Like oh, I ain't a little on. You bitch, cry a little bit. but you know, <laughs> yeah. I uh, I you know like you know, I, dude, I like sunsets, bro. Like what the fuck, you right, know? What I'm right. Like I'm is I'm that kind of guy. Like oh, dude, like like if me and you were driving on a road trip together and the sunset was badass, well, hey man, can we pull over and check this out for a minute? And that's kind of like us going down the highway listening to Brian McKnight together. It's kind of weird. But I like y'all. You don't know who that is? Old R and B singer. It's kind of weird listening to love music with guys in the car. <laughs> <laughs> but I get what gotcha. you're saying. Yeah. So you're 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 gotcha. not old enough to know this. No. Or, but back when TVs, people started putting TVs in their car. Uh-huh. You want to know what they played? Porn. Nobody nobody put a TV in their car and played Door the Explorer. <laughs> We did. <laughs> oh yeah, Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally, I mean, I I joke about this now, but I didn't realize how awkward it was because you see it in other people's cars, right? They'd have TVs in the headrest, you yeah, know, yeah. and oh, there'd be I've like porn yeah. going on, right? Yeah. But then you look in the car, and there's like three dudes sitting there. Like, yeah. <laughs> and you wonder if they all got boners or not. Yeah. <laughs> you know they do. I'm like, so the funniest thing was when, like, uh, you remember um, working? What is it? Uh, uh, workaholics. Yeah, yeah. They had like jerk off stations in the car. Uh-huh. So this is why I can't get sponsored by anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Did that camera go like this at all? No, or? no. It may be. I'll, I'll check it out. that shitty ass uh, tripod y'all got over there. Is that, <laughs> just make sure Jace is still in the. I got a monitor from there. No, just, uh, just hit, the, hit the shutter on it. Oh, we're wait. Good. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, all cool. Right. Yeah, we're just doing one angle because I tried to piggyback off their uh, equipment and. What was wrong with uh, I don't know if, if my Settings stuff... Settings in the thing? Well, that's a Sony, right? Uh, I don't remember. It's a Canon. 
cannons. Oh, that's a cannon? Okay. So I don't know if there was there might be a setting in the camera that's allowing it not to show up on my switcher. So but anyway, I mean we got it working. It's all good. I I think it's cool because we can focus on talking instead of over here going yeah. this all day and shit. So uh we do got i'm keeping an eye on time for the drop i got a so timer good. for 3 yeah. 57 we only need a minute yeah so yeah. to run to run <laughs> yeah. behind this wall <laughs> i am excited to be here to watch that two under the yeah. drop it's 40 yeah. minutes long fuck <laughs> can i do what i do normally and just like keep going <laughs> you can <laughs> <laughs> there's like so part of that was there was like an eight minute interview which was probably 25 when we filmed it of this dude Jeremy uh, something who owns Jeremy on the Hill, which is this really nice steakhouse that we pulled up into. And we've, we've had the conversation plenty. Like when, when we've done like our documentary style series, mm-hmm. you know, you have all this interview footage when you were there and you heard them tell the story, it all seems relevant. So when you go through the interview and go to edit it, like you got, you got to be a little picky and selective on what stays, but when it all boils down, that's a part of what we learned when we were there that's given the guy a chance or the girl a chance to tell their story. Mm-hmm. So it was I mean, chopped down, but it's that's a part of what we do. And I think know? that I think you were talking about it a little bit earlier. Like mm-hmm. when we first started this, it was more about a model that we wanted to kind of be around, right? It wasn't clickbait. And yeah. maybe we should have, you know. <laughs> but quality but the progression well. yes. of where we've started and where we're at. Um we're just not going to give up on it. You Would know? you and, change the progression you've had? Because, like, like you said, you could have played those other clickbaity things and and done that, but your rise has seemed to grow with a great foundation under it, rather than growing on you know some, yeah, something something that we went could viral. Change you know? it because yeah. what's happened for us it's not, it's not gone from clickbait to like cinematic. Yeah, it's gone from somewhat cin- cinematic to let's start getting better quality out there. Yeah. And and at at our, you know, at our expense. I mean, we're not the highest rated YouTube channel, but I'll yeah. put our engagement up against anyone. Yeah. We did have a few thumbnails way back in the day where we had like a bike side. A cow for, we had yeah, a but comment, not, yeah. But nothing like. But we were actually learning YouTube at that time. Like sure. What a... What a yeah, you know, and and we were long format at the time we started. Yeah, the short front format, eight minutes or or under. That was yeah. the deal, and we were we couldn't do that. When y'all started, it was kind of like the rise of TikTok and reels yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and, you and then we turned into episodes. We'd have eight episodes and doing a know. series. You know, instead of having this new review video or new whatever it else may yeah. be, it's all right. We're going on a ride to Texas. It's going to be an eight episode series, and you're going to get to follow along day by day. It just works for us. Yeah. You know? But if you look at our YouTube on Sundays from 6 a.m. in the morning to 12 p.m. at night, it's full dark purple, meaning in that in that particular component, that's when people are watching a lot. Yeah. And so it's like maybe because of the advent of the streaming and television, the way that's done today, are people sitting there for 20 minutes and watching the whole thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I, I mean. It's interesting. I think it's I think it's important to focus on the content rather than the, uh, I guess maybe the the surface headline of it because, at the end of the day, you're creating something. This is your legacy that you're building, right. you know. And if you want that for some short term gain of like, well, we got real popular on social media real quick. Well, what you did was you got eyes real quick, but you didn't really earn them, right? Right. And when you didn't earn them, now you got to prove to them that you are. The thing that they're thinking you are, but you don't even know if you're that. You know what I mean? Like right. it's hundred percent slow and a steady slow growth. The race. Yeah, yeah, I want to go slow. I don't want to. You know, I. Well, we had some guys in the very beginning say, if you if you only get twenty subscribers your first year on on YouTube, or a hundred, yeah, don't be bummed out. It's really hard to get that yeah. growth, and yeah, we surpassed yeah, that yeah, pretty that quick, real quick. You know, it's like ah. But I mean, you you. Both already before the channel happened were already kind of known for riding and going places and doing shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, because when I met you at the first Thrashing podcast, I had followed you for that reason prior to. So when you came in, I was like, oh, dude, I could talk to this dude all day. <laughs> I love riding. I, I love yep. hearing different people's perspectives of why and when and, you know, well, all we, that. We were doing that. We'd go on these rides and come back and we would be telling our families what we are now telling people. 
yeah on the videos and they would be like why aren't you sharing this yeah yeah with more people you know mm-hmm. so we did we did we did well and it's you know you think about four years ago we started this whole brand with four thousand mm-hmm. dollars it was a, a macbook pro or something and a couple of gopros yeah and at the end of the year, we were able to pay ourselves four thousand dollars back. Yeah, we it's paid ourselves back in ten first, months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so it and it's never been about the money. Um, it's always been about the stories and how we can inspire people to get out and just check the country out because yeah. it's cool out there. It is. You know, you've been all over this country, almost every state except for three. Right? I've been to every state, but every I state. haven't as a group. We haven't been to three, so flex. And the stuff that you've seen out there, whether it's a sunset or a rainstorm, and all of a sudden it opens up and it's just like clear, and the smells are great, and it's like, oh yeah, let's. And you're just on the throttle. It. I mean, I always you, you don't people, experience that if you sit in the home. Yeah, I tell people like you're really you're putting your body to work, not in a way of like I'm going to work out. You're put you all your senses are being used, right? And your mind is in a different place because it's getting so much information to it. It's a full workout. You know? That's why you're tired at the end of the day. Yeah, but so, yes. You're 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 just you're, you're just connected to it differently. Yep. And so you know, I I don't, you know, it's hard because I I'm I don't I don't want to say anything like more philosophical or anything like that, but like when you meet people that are older that seem like they've stopped having goals, dreams, you know, whether they're in their 50s or late 40s, late 60s or wherever they're at and you just see them like, "Oh, hey, what do you what, what are you going to do this year, man?" Yeah. "Oh, man, I, you know, I think I get 2 weeks vacation at some point and, you know, like there's just no no life in them because they have no mm-hmm. goals." Exactly. Right? And I think that traveling on motorcycles is probably it's dangerous, don't get me wrong. Um and it ain't for everybody, not everybody's coordinated enough. <laughs> Uh, but at the same time, like what it can tap into and what it can show you and reveal to you about yourself is kind of uh, it's kind of like a lost thing. Yeah. You know, it really is like I don't know that you're going to get that. And I don't know if young people even know that that feeling is there. But but I imagine all the anxiety and angst that's going on and everybody young trying to keep up with social media trends. And they need to ride. They're like, fuck, I got to eat Tide Pods now. You know yeah. what the hell I got to do? <laughs> oh, shit. But. It's like once they've had a taste of life and then they jump yeah. on that bike and they realize like how much different it is or how much perspective they can gain. Yeah. You know, it's a uh, I think that like a uh, Wild Hogs is a, is a funny movie and it's a joke, but the premise is more getting out there. You know, and and I hate that like movies in general have always leaned towards any way of portrayal of motorcycle culture is always lean towards bike clubs. That's the more sellable item. Even Wild Hogs had a bike club aspect mm-hmm. to it, right, right. right? But the reason why your content's good and it's mattering to the people it needs to matter to is the same reason why a movie like, uh, you know, Into the Wild is important mm-hmm. to people that that needed to be important to. Is it going to do what Barbie just did? No. Because that's, that's not the point. That's not the point. It's to te- to attach to the people that it, that it can help. But I think society um, has programmed us to do the nine to five job. Yeah. Thanks for Work till you're 65 or 67, then retire, and then try to travel when you're at an age that. When you're almost dead. You shouldn't be traveling, or you should, whatever. But so what this has allowed us to do is we're young still. Mm hmm. And we're traveling. So it's not even like a job. It's like we are out. He's seen more of this country in the last four years. If you were to ask him coming out of college, you can ask him yeah. what he thought he'd be doing. And to see the different landscapes he's seen. Yeah. And now he takes a friend on some of those same journeys to go on vacation and takes him back to some of the places mm-hmm. that yeah. are the most thoughtful and loving for him. I mean, we're living. We're yeah. not sitting around like on damn and I'm screwed because I yeah. never go get a job. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. And that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. But that's we're a good blessed thing. to have that. I yeah. mean, you know, and not many people can do that. And and we, I mean, he owns his own company. Mm-hmm. You well, know? I've done my own thing most of my life, whether it was landscaping, work, working with an uncle doing construction. My dad and I had a sign shop. So I don't even know what it's like to have a real mm. job. 
and I've always provided. I've never gotten rich, but I've always provided. So I would trade. I wouldn't trade. Yeah. My wealth that I have inside me here for anything. Yeah. Because if I died right now, I lived. Oh yeah. But it's, it's also going to be interesting to see over the next, I think, twenty or thirty years what happens. Yeah. Because this whole thing that went on in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one and the the way the workforce shifted yeah and the way the the maybe some of the youth are looking at things differently um i don't know is it, are people going to not really work that much are they just going to be vagabonds and travel the country i don't know it's going to be an interesting thing to watch over the next number of that's years that's really that's honestly like why you know one of the narratives i've been talking about all day with you guys before we got on these mics was these things that w- we now have shunned to the side film photography uh you know reading blogs and you know making books and doing all this other shit like that's starting to kind of like have a different connection than it went away it went away with social media because we can get all that information quicker but now we're not really getting information anymore well until we get the young young people of this country the young especially the young guys if they got to stop wearing their pajamas to the mall and they need to put levi's on and get a harley and fucking go ride. <laughs> the only reason I'm we, and that should be a fucking sound bite, Mike. We got a we got a country full of pussies. The only <laughs> reason I'm laughing is like when we go to lunch and I'm I'm laughing at it too. He's not even drinking. Yeah. We'll go to lunch like That's down the boulevard feel. somewhere and we'll be eating, minding our own business, and this fucking guy walks by in pajamas and he just goes off. And I'm like, I agree with you, I'm with you. More power to us. You know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Get out and ride. Find yourself. Yeah. Well, they're finding themselves in a different way. I, I, I do think. I mean, we couldn't do it what we do without social media. Yeah, um, we get people in here weekly from different countries. Um, we, we, you could argue that we launched during the worst time you could ever launch. Yeah, but it, I think it ended up. We call it fate. Yeah, yeah, worked out for us because you've got people that were in really bad lockdown and they were looking for stuff yeah you became a vicarious they, life for yeah. them and we had with, a guy tell us at the rally at the 120th uh he has and he was excited his wife and son were like behind him going our dad's crazy but he's like i have ten thousand miles on my couch because of you guys because <laughs> <laughs> he can't ride yeah. in the winter no. oh yeah that's yeah, I, we get that a lot too with people that that kind of use the content that we make, and I know you make, and everybody that that it helps them stay connected to motorcycles when there's you know three feet of snow out there or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to your point of like starting in 2020, like I mean, I traveled the most I ever had in my life in that year, but it it became easy to travel, right? right? You know, yeah, it was nice. I mean, there was there was differences <laughs> to it, but it was like it was different and. You know, like, it's crazy to think that, like, that was four years ago, you know? Well, it made us think differently, too. I mean, we took a we took a ride up to Figueroa Mountain, which is a couple hours from here, mm-hmm. put a Coleman stove in a Saddleman suitcase, mm-hmm. put it on the, on the rack, took it up, pulled it out, and cooked hamburgers and beans out in the woods to create some content. Yeah. And we, we haven't wives. done anything like that since, and it's like... Just off the cuff, we took a, a bag lunch and went up to Ojai oh, yeah. with Dom and filmed. And it was like, that's, we're sitting there eating a sandwich on the side of the road. And it was just like... That's grass-fed, home-farmed content. Yes, absolutely. But the cool thing is, is we went, during that time, we went into places. We were in Utah, different states, and meeting people that own restaurants. And no one's there, and they were shut down. I mean, we've actually had restaurants bring a table outside... And we were able to eat, bring our own alcohol, and they served us dinner when they mm. were shut down because it wasn't in their restaurant. Yeah. But yeah. they they wanted to to live and see people, so they did that. Yeah. So you you we a lot of we go there good stuff Friday. happened. Too. Have y'all done New York yet? New York City. We did upstate. Yeah. Uh, the Finger Lakes. We did just a little piece and then mm. dropped down. Had y'all have a desire to do the city? Not no. now. I've been to New York before. Not I've on been a there bike. too. My whole family's from New York. I love it. It's one of my favorite places to ride. Really, in the city? Well, around and in, in up, uh, upstate. Uh, upstate's really cool, but it's it's to me like that that city, that city is electrifying to me. Yeah, it's not you're not getting the peaceful riding you'd get on a two lane mm-hmm. road anywhere, but it's a different experience. And 
I, I feel like when I'm riding in Brooklyn or Queens or whatever, and I look across that that river, I feel like I'm looking at the Tetons. Yeah. It's digital Tetons. To right. Me. Digital you know what I'm saying? Tetons. I can dig it. I can dig what and, you're saying. Have you ever been to Brady Street? Uh, no. Uh-uh. In Milwaukee? Uh, I'm sure I've, I've been all over there, but I, you know. Man, what's, is that this a joke? street. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's like no, it's, 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 Lazelle, but times 10. The uh, shit so we've ever seen. During okay. the 120, so they, <laughs> there's thousands of people packed. It's old bars, old buildings. It's yeah, a yeah. funky old. And they're, and everyone that rides by, there's people are stopping them. They're making everyone do a burnout, and they're paying them money to burn out. And Sea Bear got in there and was doing donuts. And yeah. It there's got officers, a little crazy. But. There's officers on horses just watching it all. They, yeah. they, that one time of the year, they allow it. They say it's, it's lawless till two in the two or three in the morning. Well, it should be. I mean, if they really <laughs> want to, if they yeah. want to let people, if they really want the the income to come through with the what mm-hmm. the hometown rally right. and that can bring, then you got to let people. It's a famous. Who they street. are. Google it you for know? bikes. It's, okay, it's insane. But the city's an incredible place. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I was there, been there a number of times, but there just before nine eleven happened, mm. and just the chaos and the horns and blah, blah, blah. yeah, and then went back in October. And it was around the World Trade Center, Trade Center, just very reverent, yeah, quiet, eerie, yeah. It was just so weird to, and then to go back a number of years later and to see now the Freedom Tower, yeah, yeah. I when I walk up, I just get, I'd start, I cry, yeah, I mean, yeah. You say you don't cry, I cry, yeah. You get goosebumps. It's no, I just cry too. I just gnarly. don't admit it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a one a interesting aspect was my girl. Yeah, that got me a long time ago. My girl, my girl. When we did uh, Route sixty six, you know, we spent six seven days on the back roads of America, and then we pull into Chicago. Yeah, and it's like he yeah. said, just sensory overload. You're going under bridges. There's trains. There's people. There's sketchy dudes doing shit in the street. Um, I can't say I enjoy like stopping at all the lights and being around the traffic, but there yeah. is some cool. It's digital. You get these crazy buildings. You're getting a landscape that's. Clouds in yeah. a glass building, yeah. Like just it's a, it's it's like I said, it's a perspective thing, right? Because right. if you're same thing when people say, uh, you know, like, okay, here's a, here's a hot take. Uh, everybody clowns on Kansas. Oh, it's the worst state to ride in. Yeah. I think it's amazing. Really, it's, it's where it's, uh, and I've honestly, I would pick Kansas over Florida anytime. Sorry, Florida. It's not <laughs> so, saying a whole lot. <laughs> but you know, Kansas. You know, when you you know. You got big sky, so that's great. So you got like whatever's going on in the sky is always going to be a visual kind of thing to have attention to. You do have a lot, depending on what roads you are, there's a lot of flatness. There's a lot of that. But there's also a lot of rolling hills, and there's a lot of Mm -hmm. small towns, and there's a lot of history that getting connected to the history of it and that and rolling through it, like you you start to connect to it in a different way. Yeah. You know, and I mean, there's stretches of every part of every state that you're going to say – I can do without this. When I leave here Saturday morning, I can do without the stretch from, you know, uh, Palm Desert to, you know, Vegas, whatever. Phoenix. Yeah. Honestly, I can do without it all the way to Dallas. Mm-hmm. Honest, I'm, I'm over it. But there's parts of all these things that aren't necessarily fun, but you're still looking at mountains. You're still looking at this and still on the bike, still and moving. You know what? I, sometimes like oh, he's in the car. Yeah, I'm in the car this time, but like, even like things like PCH, this thing that people dream about, it's a beautiful thing. But if you put all your eggs in that basket and then you go get stuck behind a couple of those Travel America trailers, yeah, you're you know you you just you you missed out on so much because you just thought this is the only experience on motorcycles and it's it's everywhere. You know what I mean? I mean, just think how people are though. If someone said, "Hey, you know, I really want to go to Kansas and check it out," and then his friend goes, "I would never go there because I went there. It sucks." So why put that negative vibe on it, right? Yeah. Right. Let the guy go find out. Let him yeah. go experience his Kansas. I or his Canada. My, or his Canada. <laughs> yes. Hey, I went there. I know. You loved it. Right. I mean, maybe back to the New York thing. But no but, one said don't go there. Yeah. yeah. The history in the East Coast is very unique. Yeah. And visually, especially. Yeah. When we were in Maine, granted, Maine is just insane. He didn't like Maine so over. much. But it was okay. When we were in Maine, there's a lot of small towns. You know, you go on some stretch, there's nothing. 
And then you start seeing these like brick buildings come out of the weed, the woodwork. Yeah, whatever. the weed work. The weed work. <laughs> um, all that green out there. It's just a cool. And New York, all, you know. Yeah, all those towns up there, like the Laconia, all, uh, everything. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. I like the old. Um, I like all that shit, but. You know, I I just feel like that you you know everybody keeps asking me when I'm going to go out of the country. Like when are you going to do one day? I'm going to do the all the way to South America thing, mm-hmm. hopefully. Um, but man, like I'm still when every year I wake up and think, man, I want to go experience that and this and this and it's all within these walls. Yeah, not yet. We're working on the walls. I'm well, sorry. I can I can tell you this though. <laughs> right now, I can tell you everywhere we've gone, and even like if you say we went down to Daytona, yeah, and we didn't have it was like ah, we don't really need to go back there. We had a good time there. Yeah. We yeah. have a good time wherever we go because we're on a motorcycle. We're doing our thing. We're getting food. We're meeting people. So it's I still think, something good comes out I mean, of this. I'm just looking at the map, and it's not every ride is on there, but we still have some holes and gaps we've got to get to. Hey, I, I, mean? don't, I don't see a lot of Minnesota and Iowa up there. And let me tell you, those two places I were know. absolutely f- Amazing. We right. got it. We got to go do that. Minnesota. We did the UP this year, and uh, that was overrated, one hundred percent. But let me tell you about Minnesota. Just back roads, stay off the main right. highway. You know, do do the two lane thing, and you're you're just carving these lakes and these these little towns, and it's mm-hmm. well, we went, we ended up in Sturgis, big sky Michigan. too. Yeah, but I I mean I've been to Mich- or Minnesota not on a bike. Yeah, but it, I mean Duluth. Yeah, mm-hmm. we Duluth gotta, got we me. Gotta go, we got to go check some spots. I've out. been to Minnetonka for a week. <laughs> Bathe in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta watch that old uh, Dave Chappelle skit when Let's he acts like Prince. In the yeah. dead of winter. We've never gone to North Dakota. No, we, we so we on our trip we had to cut off some states. So we literally stayed in Sioux Falls, great town, fun time. Uh, we went up and we literally clipped North Dakota by five miles in, ten miles over, and then we were in Minnesota and it was awesome. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's that way we can knock it off because I, I and I, I tried to ask people, hey, what's what's Minnes- what's uh, North Dakota got? Oh, nothing. But I think all these states, just some, you don't have to have a lot of time to enjoy a lot of cool shit. Some you need to have some time. Well, and I think to you got to find the gems, right? Like, yeah. We did the Cherahala Skyway last year. Yeah. And then we did um, Tale of the Dragon, the Tale of the Dragon, and we liked the Cherola that better because it, it was is. long. I yeah. like scraping that rental bagger on the Dragon, though. <laughs> but that, I mean, yeah, the Dragon was fun, yeah, the but it's only was, ten miles long or yeah. something, or twelve, yeah. mile, fifteen miles long. It's a tighter like thing. It's it's more for like it's a sport bike thing. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, it's more for that. But you could say Nevada has nothing to see, but then you go see oh. Nevada. Yeah, and it's incredible. One of my I, favorite roads is Highway 50. That's what I'm saying. One of my goals this year is mm-hmm. to do uh, 50 the whole way through. I've done some of it, but I want to do the whole thing. That one of my favorite yeah. where to where rides at done. least border to border. You know, you or, mean like, coast to coast? No, Nevada, fuck no. Nevada. It doesn't go just uh, 50 from Lincoln like Utah. Highway, what's that? That's 80. 90. 80. 80. 80. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you want? Yeah, do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so badass. We, we did, did the extraterrestrial winter. highway. We did that whole thing. That was boring I as hell. Bike. So did we. Check did cams. you see the brothel? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We have a. Did we you have stop? Our, <laughs> who was your favorite? <laughs> we have our badass. live starting in. Yeah. Seven minutes. Yeah. Well, That's we right. can. Uh, you know, guys. Uh, I, I I know this is a shorter podcast than we're used to, but I'm glad we were able to kind of put something together. Um, I mean, it's 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 inspiring me to see you guys continue to evolve the channel and grow it and. And stay true to what it's about, which is traveling on motorcycles. And if not, I'll start talking shit to you. You can, <laughs> and you could talk yeah. shit to us for sure if we did. Yeah, but it's it's really funny, not funny. It's really interesting that we've been doing this for like four years, mm-hmm. right? And you were there at the beginning. Yeah. Well, I mean, we and you put us on when we were. Yeah, we, we didn't have a, a relevance at the time, and you put us on. I think and you, I've heard more I'll, before. You, okay. I've heard more than one time people say I've heard you on Jace's podcast. Mm-hmm. So, for me personally, and for Lance, and for Tulane, I want to thank you for doing that for us. Oh yeah, man. Well, you, what you guys may not have had a channel, and may not have had what you've got now, but what you did have, which was obvious to me, was the passion for rat, riding motorcycles and traveling on it. And so that's all I was trying to exploit was the fact that th- the nature of your being is what I personally think is the best part about motorcycles. Right. So, you know, all the success that you had, you know, 
to me, that's just awesome because that means that more people do want this kind of thing out there. They, they want it. motorcycle. They want to see more people traveling and doing and living on motorcycles. Well, but you're our friend. Yeah, yeah. And we wouldn't have had that without the motorcycles. Right. You right. know what I mean? True. The cool yeah. thing is, is we had a guy talk to us and tell us he loves what we do. Don't stop. The motorcycle industry needs it. And he goes, look, look at me right now. And he had goosebumps all over his arms. He goes, just telling you this, I'm getting, yeah, you know. So, I mean, that's the point, man. The point, I mean, my podcast has always been about trying to find people that are doing cool shit, trying to find genuine people and, um, and trying to learn, you know, right. like I'm, I'm part idiot in some aspects. So the goal for me is to come and sit down with, you know, originally with you and, and you to just learn about how you do what you do. Right. And, you know, my, well, we my time, share, my time will come. those <laughs> successes and failures yeah. with each other and learn from it. Like you're saying. Yeah. And this you may know. be a short show. And, but the good thing about that is we'll do another one and yeah. hear more. Yeah, and this we've got plenty of episodes. Well, we're now. never gonna get like the four hour one. one yeah, we, did that. we were rogue. We had you hooked on Montuckies for a while. <laughs> yes, you did. I can't find them. Yeah, they they kind of went super uh, uh, other south. Yeah, they're not really. I mean, it's it's still a good beer, but it's like a the brand itself didn't want to lean into the motorcycle world at all. Yeah. So it's like, well, I guess we'll go fuck ourselves. So uh, back to PBR it is. Right. Um, but no, thank you guys. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to sit here and witness this uh, 200th video with you guys. And yeah, I mean, I'm sitting in your studio in your new uh, compound headquarters. So I think that's a, it's a success, man. Well, we're stuck, so, man. Yeah. Thanks for having us. All right.